tough game. Uh, I thought my guys fought. They played their hearts out. And uh, I think Houston just made a lot of plays. They made the plays they needed to make. Uh, made, you know, late clock possession plays, tough shots. And, uh, you know, to be the team like that, you know, you have to do things better. You know, can't allow those type of shots or those type of opportunities because there's a reason why they're a top five team in the nation. And so uh, hats off to them for, you know, how they executed and made those plays. And we just have to continue to get better and still find a way to, uh, to win. You guys got it to five late in the second half, just had opportunities to get it close. You just couldn't get over that hump, and things kind of got away from you. What what kind of got you to that point, and what needed, what did you need to do better in that time? Well, a few things. I think Taylor picking up his fourth hurt us. I mean, I thought it was a great game, and uh, I thought both he and, he and Walker, two of the most talented freshmen in the country, I thought it was a great game. And so we lost him during, during part of that uh, time, and that didn't help us none, you know, because he was playing well. and. They were battling back and forth, and so that didn't help. And then, of course, we cut to five, and then, you know, a guy throws in, you know, how many, how many last second, you know, shots did they throw in? You know, with guys just hitting late shot clock shots. And so we have to be better where those shots don't affect us as much. And you, the, only, the way you're better is you're not in a position where you're playing catch up all the time, you know, because those shots hurt you more, you know, hurt you as much if you're up 12, it hurt you when you're down six and seven and eight. And so, uh, we have to do a better job of establishing that where we're not playing catch up so that those shots don't have the impact that they had on us. What was your thinking on how long you kept him out? Were you thinking about when no, you bring him back? Definitely. You know, you're looking at a freshman, so, and, and you're looking at, you know, one of the best coaches in the country, so you, you know what the game plan is going to be at that point. It's going to be find ways to put him in a position where you can attack him. So either he backs off and you get easy baskets or he fouls you. So he puts us in a, in a precarious situation there. So what we did was we tried to just time it where we could bring him back. So I think we sat him for about four or five minutes, maybe five, and, uh, and then we brought him back with, with that, what we felt would be ample time to make a run. And I thought we did. We still cut to five during that time, except Sneed threw up a, you know, last second three. You know, we have a flagrant foul happening during that sequence, which gives them two free throws and the ball back. So they extend the lead and get the ball so they can run more clock and get another shot attempt. So those things kind of hurt, you know, when you're trying to play catch up. What did you see on that flagrant foul on Horton? You know, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. So, uh, you know, I just know they called it flagrant. Uh, you know, we were, so, we were more concerned about the foul being called because we felt the shot clock had gone off before the foul was called. So I was more concerned with that. I had no idea it was even a flagrant. No one even said that. And then I just went to the monitor, then it was a flagrant foul. So, I mean, I thought it was just more or less a foul and it happened after, you know, shot clock, so we were going to get the ball. Coach, what did you think of Darius Johnson's tonight? Darius Johnson's play tonight, you know, first time back in three weeks, I mean, for 30 the, minutes. For the first time back, and I mean, and he, he had, I mean, he's practiced, when I say sparingly, I mean sparingly in the last couple of days. For him to come out and have that type of performance against this type of team, you know, bodes well for us as he starts to round himself back in shape and get his timing back. You know, we, you know, we're fighting right now with some guys who aren't, you know, I'm not saying you have a full strength this time of the season because something's always going on. It's a long year. But, you know, we have a few guys, and Darius being one of them, who, as they continue to get healthier, I think we get better. Coach, was there a moment where you guys thought about maybe not having him play, or was he kind of adamant, and did he kind of let you guys know he really wanted to play in this game? No, he wanted to play. <laughs> he would. But, he, but the, the progression he was in, it was time. It timed out where he'd probably be, be ready to go this game, and he was. And so, you know, he was ready. When I talked to him, I asked him how he feel. Did you want to, you know, do be reinserted, you know, reinserted back in the lineup to, to kind of give him a, another shot in the arm too? He was like, yes. So that's when I knew he was ready because he, he didn't. A lot of guys were like, oh, well, let me bring me in off the bench and let me. He's like, no, coach, I, I can go right from the start. You had 16 offensive rebounds tonight, coach. How how does those extra possessions affect you, especially in this stretch of a tough game? They hurt you. I mean, it's 11 point ball game, and you know they have, they're plus eight on second chance points. You know, just that alone just hurts you. And uh, we have to be better in that area. Our, our biggest thing that, you know, we need to concentrate on is rebounding the basketball. You know, we have to be better. And we have been a really good rebounding team, you know, but as of late, this being the game, of course, Houston's one of the best in the nation at it every year. You know, we have to understand the importance of, you know, boxing out and rebounding the ball. Where is this team defensively? Not where we were, you know, three weeks ago. Uh, we're not defending to that level. We're giving up 80 points again. And so we're not defending to the level that we would like. And uh, we have to turn that around. But some of it's happening because of the rebounds. 
I mean, again, I mean, you get 16 second chance points. You know, you knock and you knock 12 or 14 of those off, all of a sudden you're 268, 67. So it's a lot more palatable. So we have to do a better job of eliminating the second shot. I think our first shot defense, a lot of times, has been pretty good. It's the shot or the reshot that's hurt us, and we have to do a better job of eliminating that. How much does Michael Durr being out impact that? It definitely does. I mean, we really, I mean, that's our, I mean, he's a, he's a fifth year senior, he's a banger, you know, he's a rebounder. And so, of course, you know, you don't have a player like that or a player like C.J. Walker, of course, who plays above the rim like Taylor. You know, those rebounds, you know, take care of themselves a little bit. You know, we don't have those guys. So we have to understand our personnel and ask our guys to give us more because they can. You know, they're capable, they're talented, and they just have to give us more in that area. Let's go under a rough stretch here. Uh, I mean, this game is always going to be tough, but what do you want to see from the guys between now and, and noon on Saturday uh, to break out of this? Well, we have to reset. You know, we have to have a reset. We're going through a tough stretch right now of game, games that we're playing, teams that we're playing, two on a row, tough competition at home against a top five team in the nation. I mean, it's a tough stretch. You know, what we need to do is we need to learn and grow from this. This will help us get better. As we start to get our chemistry back with our guys getting healthy, which they are, and we start to understand, you know, what, what holes do we need to plug in our game, which we see, and then we can start improving in those areas. The thing that we have is our guys are all conscientious. They want to they want to do well. They want to do well for our university. They want to do well for our team. So their attitudes are great. So as long as their attitudes stay great and it, stay, it stays about our team, then we'll find ways to, to you know, get out of this and move forward and win. Your team has battled Houston twice now. How do you measure your team against theirs? Uh, the first, I think that we played a lot of good teams this year, and I think they're the best team that we played. And uh, I think you know we've been competitive. You know, and, and I think we've not been able to get over the hump for one reason or another. You know, both games were different. I think the first game was it was more turnovers. The second game it was more the offensive rebounds and fast break points for them. So we have to do a better job at identifying those things and try to shore them up for us. And then we know we can play on that caliber, that kind of level. Now, like I said, I don't, you know, they're definitely better. They won both games. So that, you know, that's, that, that's obvious. But I think we can compete. And now we have to go from competing to winning. You know, we have to go from competing against a team of that caliber to winning against a team of that caliber. And that's kind of where we are. Coach Early, we talked to Coach Sampson, <clears throat> and um, we, we kind of asked about the future and what he thought about facing UCF and going into the Big 12 and all that. And uh, he concluded something along the lines of saying, um, as long as you guys have Dawkins, you're all going to be OK. Um, well, how do you respond to that praise from Coach Sampson? Well, I have, a, I have a lot of respect for Coach Sampson. I mean, I, you know, and I always have. I mean, just, a, you know, a great coach, great competitor. And I, I love what he does for his teams. You know, I, you know, we look at them and what they do. And uh, that's why I think they've been so successful. You know, he has a great formula and he has a great culture. You know, his culture is so strong. And that's, to me, a, a sign of, you know, who he is as the coach. So, uh, no, nah, so I have nothing but highest of praise for him and his family, great family. And uh, yeah, and I, and I think he's represented this league well. And I think he'll, you know, he'll continue to do you know, something similar in the, in the Big 12 as well. Largest crowd here since the Illinois game, Coach, where the student section was overflowing. Just describe that atmosphere tonight. It was beautiful. And uh, as you know, we're going to have to have that. You know, where we're headed and where we're going, and even in our league right now, we're going to have to have that. It's so competitive. You know, people coming here, teams are really good, really talented. And if you don't have a home court atmosphere like it like it was tonight, then we're you know we're at a disadvantage because when we go on the road to play those teams, they're going to have this type of, of home court advantage. They're going to have you know a packed student section. They're going to have people in the stands, you know. And, and and to the point, as we move forward, those those programs are going to travel. So which means they're going to bring a lot of people in our building. If we're not careful, you'll have half the half the building be Kansas fans or something like that. So we have to understand the importance of the timing of right now starting to establish, like we did today, who we're going to be as a program because it's going to be all hands on decks. We can't do it without, we can't do it without our community. But you got to win. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it is, it's a definitely a fine line with that. And I think we mostly win at home, you know, to be quite frank. We, don't, we haven't lost too much at home in my career here, at least I don't think we have. So that's been happening. So now it needs everybody still to kind of get on board. You know, this is a nice one-off game, and, and they're a very good team. But I think we've more than held our own at home, you know, most of the time we've been here. So how important is it for the fans to come this Saturday against Tulsa at noon? How much does that mean to you guys, all the players? Temple. Or Temple, What's sorry. How, how big is it that the fans show up this Saturday at noon against Temple? How much it's does it mean huge. to you guys and the players? It's huge again. I mean, Temple's a very good team. You know, you're talking about some of the, the wins they've had. They've been up and down, but they've had a really good year. I mean, they, 
think they beat Villanova, Big 12 team. They beat Rutgers, a Big Ten, a Big Ten team. I mean, they have some good wins out of conference. And, uh, of course, in conference, they beat Houston at Houston. So, of course, you're playing against another very good basketball team. And so, for us, we need everybody, like I said, all hands on deck. We all pulling in the same direction. You know, it's ironic, you know, you mentioned about fans and winning to do that. I was 11 and 17 at Duke, and it was always full my first year. I never, I never saw it empty. I don't understand how that happened. We weren't winning, but they were with us. And then when we started winning, they stayed with us. Coach, you had Taco Fall visit the team this week. What was the biggest take, oh, what take away, the biggest thing that, that he imparted onto the team that you want them to take with them as they go into this next matchup? You know, Taco spoke to our team yesterday, and he was great. He talked about, you know, he put, looked up at his banner, pointed to his banner, and said, this is what this is about. It's about leaving your legacy. It's about leaving it better for the next group that comes behind you where they have something to pursue and something to try to achieve. And uh, it resonated with our guys. We've seen their eyes. So everybody kind of looked up and their eyes got wide And because uh, it was powerful. You know, first of all, his presence is so, is so powerful anyway. And then when he says what he says about, you know, his experience, how much he loved his experience here, loved playing for us, as well as, um, you know, what just, like I said, about the banner being up there and leaving your legacy, it was really, really good. I thought our guys, really, it really resonated with our team. Four blocks defensively. you speak about his impact on that set of goals? Uh, you know, Taylor, Taylor's a, Taylor's definitely a two-way player. I mean, he can defend, he can rebound, he can block shots, and uh, you know, he just try. You know, he just goes out there and plays to win, and that's the thing I love about him. He, he, you know, he keeps his demeanor the same way all the time. He's never too high, he's never too low, and uh, he just looks to make basketball plays. And and he made a couple of tremendous blocks, of course, at the rim today, and uh, blocks that would have, you know, of course, that really helped us. And so, just foul trouble kind of got to him a little bit, which hurt us some. And he's a freshman. I mean, what do you, you know, in that situation, you know, he has to understand his value to our team and, and try to stay out of those situations. But th that just comes through experience. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah.